Welcome to another five minute flip. What is up, Flip Upon I? Welcome to your five minute flip for November the 20th, 2024. So, this last Sunday, I just preached on Jesus' baptism and then he heads into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. It's the end of Matthew 3. Uh, starting in verse 16, and then it goes into Matthew 4, verse 11. And if you want to hear that whole message, you can find it, uh, search on your podcast app for Mosaic Church of Grand Rapids Sermon Podcast. And also on YouTube, you can search at Mosaic GR with the at symbol, and we should pop up And that would be the sermon from November 17th, 2024, called Why We Strive. So in this passage, there's this interesting word that Satan uses twice with Jesus. And he says, if you are the son of God, prove yourself. You know, that's that's kind of the, the whole narrative of this passage and where where that sermon comes out of is Satan's temptation to Jesus that he had to prove himself. And I'm not going to give you the whole sermon here. This is a five-minute flip. You can listen to the whole thing um, on your own time. But I want to sit with that one word, if. And this, really, if you think about it, kind of funny. It's it's funny. Satan's temptations can be comical when we see them from a third-party perspective, when we're, when we're not the one in them. Maybe not comical, but maybe very obvious or clear. Sometimes you see that in a movie. You'll be watching a movie and, you know, take Lord of the Rings, for example, which I love, and and you see certain characters doing, doing certain things with the ring, and you just go, no, like, don't do that. That's so obvious that that isn't what you should do, uh, whether it's Boromir or Frodo or, or whoever. And, man, we can do that easily with, with other people's tes- uh, temptations or w- when we see them from, from the third party. Very different than when we're the one in them. So Jesus is being tempted by Satan, and Satan says to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, you know, turn these stones into bread, for example, is the first one. Uh, but the point I want to make is, if you're the Son of God, did Jesus know if he was the Son of God or not? We would say clearly, yes, he knew. Well, how did he know? Uh, if That's where Matthew three sixteen to 17 comes in. He had just been baptized, and the Holy Spirit ascended on him like a dove, and a voice from heaven spoke and said aloud, this is my son whom I love, and in him I am well pleased. And in the sermon, I make the connection with Romans eight seventeen. we are co-heirs with Christ, we get what he gets, uh, Colossians 1, when the Father sees us, he sees perfection. He sees the perfection of Jesus. He sees holiness when he sees us, when he sees you, if your faith is in Jesus, he sees holiness. He calls you holy without blemish and free from accusation. And so uh, we also should know who we are. We know that we are the beloved Sons and daughters of God, we know that we have the perfection of Christ on us. We know that we are fully whole. We're we're uh, approved. We're a valid. We're valued. We're validated. We're loved in the perfection of Christ. And so, going back to the word "if" and kind of the irony, maybe even humor of this story, Satan is posing like he is the judge that determines who Jesus is. He says to Jesus, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you're the son of God, he says, throw yourself down from the temple. Uh, you know, be impressive. Have these people watch you do this. The angels will rescue you if you're the son of God. Because right now, you're not that impressive, Jesus. You're just starting your ministry. You haven't done any miracles. You haven't died on the cross yet. Nobody knows who you are. You're supposed to be the Messiah. You're supposed to be the one to save the world. And you're just a carpenter. No, nobody, you know, you're, you're a rabbi and you've done some teaching, but nobody knows who you are. You're not, you're not popular uh, you, you haven't done anything to, to prove that you're worthy, right? That word worthy, you know, we like watching the Marvel movies with my kids and 
Uh, just rewatched a few of them. Thor is worthy of the hammer. Uh, he, he's he, and, and only someone who's worthy can carry the hammer, and no one else is worthy except uh, some very few exceptions. And, and that's that's what Satan is doing here to Jesus. If you're worthy to be the Messiah, wow, big words, Jesus, Messiah, really? That's really who you are, Son of God, really? That's that's who you are. Prove it. Prove who you are. If if you're the son of God. And I think when, when we know what we know about Jesus and that word if just becomes comical to me, it, it becomes this Satan, really? You thought that would work on Jesus? As if Satan has authority to determine who Jesus is or not. So in the sermon, I put up this funny photo. I kind of compiled two photos together. I found on Party City, the you know where everybody buys their Halloween costumes. Uh, Halloween costume of a judge. So you can, for $21.99, you can get a black robe and a white curly wig and a, and a fake, you know, plastic mallet or whatever. And you can be a judge. Is that, and then I put a picture of a real judge next to that judge, a judge in a court of law, a judge with the, a judge with the seal behind it of, of authority. And I said, which of these two judges would you care what they think of you? Do you care what the judge on the left wearing the Halloween costume thinks of you? Or do you care what the one in authority that's actually a judge on the law books that actually can do, has, has say in your sentencing or in your, in your judgment, if you're guilty or innocent, uh, which one you care about? Well, you care about the real judge. Well, our real judge is Jesus. Our real judge is God. And he sees us and his judgment is you are holy, you are without blemish, you are free of accusation. His judgment of us is, you are a co-heir with Christ. So therefore, his judgment of us is, you are my son or daughter, because we are adopted, Romans eight fifteen to 17, we are children of God, we are adopted into sonship. This, uh, and, and so he looks at us and says with his judgment, um, you are my son, you are my daughter, whom I love, and whom I am well pleased. That's it. That's our judgment. And then Satan comes along and says, if, if that's true of you, if you are lovable, if you have value, if you are accepted. And I really want to challenge you as you, as you hear this five minute flip today and ask, I don't think it's hard, I don't think it's hard to, to, to get to this conclusion, but ask the Holy Spirit to show you what that if is in your life. And really, I think you can listen. I'm not saying you're, you're hearing Satan's voice in audible ways, uh, but I think we can listen to the ifs that he brings into our life. And we got into a great discussion on Saturday morning on this passage with our Beyond the Battle alumni group. So we're a bunch of guys. We're in recovery from looking at pornography, lust, uh, other other women, um, you know, some guys' infidelity, and, and getting... And, and for some guys that are gay or same-sex attracted are in the boat with us as well and who are, who are committed to, to celibacy. And we're looking at this question of if and saying, what are the ways Satan brings the if question to me? And it, it works kind of like this. If you truly are... Or maybe it flips around a little bit in my case, I, th- I think, or it's, it's helpful to kind of flip it around. If you had this woman, this woman that you see that, that you're, um, there's energy around that, you know, and, and the temptation now there is to lust, the temptation there is now to fantasize, uh, the temptation now is to be discontent with reality. If you had this woman, then you would be loved, then you would be validated, then you would be approved. Just like he's saying to Jesus, if you did this impressive thing, then you would have, you you would be worthy of your status as son of God. Then you would be loved by God. Then you would truly be the Messiah. You would truly be who you say you are. If you do this impressive thing first, Jesus didn't have to do the impressive thing. To prove who he was. Jesus didn't have to prove anything to Satan. Why? Because he already knew who he was. The father had just told him, you're my son whom I love and whom I am well pleased. And I want to challenge you with that. In, in, in your spiritual formation, and your spiritual practices, as you go into times of solitude, as you spend time in contemplative prayer, 
really let God speak the truth of the gospel over you, that you are my son, my daughter, my child, in whom I love and whom I'm well pleased. You are holy, you are without blemish, you are free from accusation. You are my adopted child, you are a co-heir with Christ. You receive what he receives. You receive all of the Father's love as an adopted child of God. That is who you are. And when Satan's if comes your way, and the if could be a sexual temptation, the and you can utilize it in this way as a tool against lust, against porn, against the, the, the allure of romance, that if you're single, that you need to be in a romantic relationship with someone, that if you're married, that you need to be in a romantic relationship with someone else, or that you need your spouse to be more romantic with you, that you need these things. These are all ifs from Satan. If you had more romance in your life, then you would be full, then you would be made whole, then you would be lovable, then you would be approved, then you would be accepted. For, for many of us, and it's not just a one category thing, it can certainly uh, struggle in many areas. For me, another if is the, the platform. Uh, and, and what does this look like for you? You know, you can translate. Um, if you had more podcast downloads, if you had more book sales, if you had more blog stats, if you had this type of platform, then you would matter. Then you would be important. Then you would be valuable and approved and accepted. What does that look like for you in your work life? If you had the approval of your boss, if you had the next promotion, if you had the next degree next to your name, then you would be valued, accepted, approved. If you made more money, uh, if you had more possessions, if you owned more stuff and were more impressive and drove a better car and had the newest phone and had the newest TV, and if, 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 if you had these things, then you would be accepted valued, worthy, loved, lovable? And the answer is in Matthew 3, 17. Listening to the Father's voice speak to you and to me and saying, you are my beloved child. I love you. I am well pleased with you. And when you know that, as Jesus knew it, you see Satan in the judge outfit, and he looks silly, and you say, go away. Go away. I, I, don't <laughs> I know who I am, and I have the authority of Christ in my life, and I'm going to rest in it. And I'm not saying you can learn this from one five-minute flip or one sermon, but this is our lifetime of spiritual formation. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. This is what we need to be remembering. He said that with communion. I believe that's what our spiritual formation is. And our, our solitude time and our time with God, our reflective time with God, our prayer time with God, we are allowing God's voice, God's spirit to remind us of the truth of who we are in Christ. And then you can start hearing Satan's ifs and go, oh, that temptation to look at porn, that's just an if from Satan. If I had that then, I don't need, I, I already have, I already have value. I already have acceptance. I already have love. And you start hearing the ifs from Satan and being satisfied and content and even to the point of being overwhelmed with the love of God in your life and the blessing of his love in your life. And it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I'm on this journey with you and I want to share this encouragement to you. I hope it's encouraging to you. And thanks for listening uh, to this 15-minute uh, five-minute flip. We'll be back with more uh, long-form episodes, and uh, Patreon is open if you'd like to support the flip side, patreon.com slash Noah Flipiak. I will see you next time on the flip side. Thanks for listening to this five-minute flip. Subscribe for more flips and long-form episodes of the flip side. Visit www.patreon.com slash Noah Flipiak to support and get sweet flip side swag.